Testing one, two. One, two, one, one, two, one. Test of one, two, one, one, two, one. Test of one, two, one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Come on, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's give him a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Every praise is due our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah to our God. Sing every praise. Every praise. Every praise to our God. Sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. We want to sing every praise. 
Jesus a great praise tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. Yes, there is. There's a better life. And if you got Ourselves worn out from the same old fight. Yes, and we've all run to things that we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. Yes, there is. There's a better life. And if you got pain, he's a pain taker. Yes, he is. And if you feel lost. tonight. Give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's worship him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many thankful for his presence in this place tonight? Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Brother Mickey, will you come and your family and sing a song, please? Give them a hand as they come. All the way from, is it, is it Mississippi? Missouri. That's close. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? <laughs> just, just want to, just want to just say that it's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to get to enter into praise and worship with you. But more than anything, it's an honor for him to show up. Amen. It's such an honor for him to show up. I'm thankful that the veil is torn. Amen. I'm thankful that the veil was torn, that, a, that, a, that an old ranked sinner could enter into the presence of God. I don't have to go to a priest. I don't have to go to a, I don't have to go and confess my faults to a, to a man and he opened up a, a, a door for me. No, that's not what happens. I can go to my prayer closet. I can go to my father. And I can say, listen, I've failed and I've stumbled and I've, I've been in some places I should have never been, but you, 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 you love me. You may not have accepted me the way I was, but you loved me. And even while I was yet in sin, he loved me. But he brought me to a place where in my, in, in my salvation, through his blood, I was made the righteousness of God. David said, restore unto me the joy of I've always quoted it as my salvation. But that's wrong. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He joyed in his suffering over my wretched state. And guess what? Because of the cross, there was a joy. There was a joy even though the dark clouds split that day. Even though the veil was torn and even though it seemed like hope was lost, there was a joy. I believe there was a smile on his face when he said it is finished. I believe there was a hope in his heart that said there's going to be a man that needs my salvation. And so when I pray that and I read that today, the Lord brought that to my attention the other night. 2.30 in the morning, I'm sitting on my couch and I'm full of doom and I'm full of gloom and I don't understand what's going on. And I began to read that from my phone and I said, just reading it out of instinct, I said, restore the joy of my salvation. And the Lord said, no, read that. He said, because your salvation was death, but my salvation was life. There is no, there is no joy in death. He said, there is no hope in death. He said, you laid down that wretched sin man and you died but he said I saw you polluted in your own blood and I said live he said my salvation brings life your salvation brought death restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me in thy free spirit it didn't cost me anything it was free can we worship him today
searching every heart so I worship you I worship you and you are here and you're healing every heart I worship you Don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. He never stop, he never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. He never stop, you never stop working. We make miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And you are here, and you're turning. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who a good friend here, Brother Vellis. Hey, Brother Vellis. Pastor Greg preached last night, and he was talking about dealing with hurt, uh, dealing with pain from our past, dealing with bitterness. And I come up here and I prayed, and I thought, you know, all that's good. I'm good in my life. Look over your neighbor and say, I'm good in my life. And I was up here praying, and God was dealing with me, and God was speaking to me. And Kara's got this little thing. I guess she's made it in Sunday school, and it's full of rice. And it's a little clear jar. And, and it's got a little lamb in it. And God was speaking to me. And you shake that rice and it surfaces. You find that lamb. God said, Micah, you didn't deal with it. You buried it. <laughs> and you don't know it's buried until there's just a little shaking and it comes to the surface. <laughs> and I was thinking about that. And you know, you got to go through shaking to get some stuff out. Look over your neighbor and say, sometimes you got to go through shaking to get some stuff out. But my daughter's found out a little secret. She grabs this thing and she pops the lid off and there's no shaking. And she digs in until she finds that toy. God told me tonight there's going to be some people that don't got to go through shaking to get some stuff out. There is, that is nothing but supernatural deliverance to where you can have an instant turnaround without a shaking. If, if you're going through this, I'd raise my hands now and say, God, don't let me go through a shaking. I'd say I wouldn't be embarrassed. I'd stand up right now and say, God, don't let me go through a shaking. You know, the, the Bible tells us, i got to read this verse. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And you're saying, Micah, I don't want to deal with this. I didn't deserve this. God's just telling you to come unto me. And you're looking at it and saying, well, this is difficult. This has been years. Jesus is telling you, come unto me. I can tell you someone that's gooder than a friend. I can tell you someone that's thicker closer than a brother. I can tell you of a Savior that won't just save you and leave you. He will be with you always until the end. Somebody that's been through some deliverance, stand to your feet and raise your hands and say, God's done this for me. Look around. There is deliverance in this place. And you want to know why there's deliverance here? It's because God is in here. They were talking about even when I don't see it, you're working. God is doing stuff that you're not seeing in this room right now. God is moving for people in ways you ain't understanding right now. All he's saying is, come unto me.
Bouchard testified first. I'm so glad you're here. Would you turn around and wave at somebody? Frankie and Betty's little brother here. Michael, we prayed so much for you. I'm just glad you're here. Brother Johnson here, you've been so kind to me. You've been a friend. Thank you for being here. Brother Craig, we're gonna we gonna just gonna be a we're gonna have church tonight. Michael, you gotta have an altar call. What anointing's on you. Somebody thank the Lord for this testimony. Surely the Lord is in here. Amen. These scriptures, I'm, I'm going to give Pastor plenty of time. Gen- Genesis 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came unto the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, this a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep laying by it. And out of the well that watered the flock, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither all the flocks gathered. Somebody say all. And thither all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and they watered the sheep, and they put the stone again upon the well's mouth in its place. There were three flocks there, and nothing happened. They were thirsty, and nothing happened. Jesus was telling us, I got waters you never drunk of before. I've been preaching 40 years, but there's something inside of me. I just don't want to shout again. And I just don't want to feel another chill bump. I want a taste of him that I've never tasted. I want to go summers I've never been. I want, I want it. Wouldn't it be wonder when this man of God began to preach on a Tuesday night? So they're gathered here. And this is one thing I love about camp meeting and about revival. I think more than anything else. So there's three and a half million. They get to the Red Sea. Somebody's going in. Somebody's in the middle. And somebody's coming out. Nobody's at the same place. Turn around, turn around and tell somebody, you're a little bit different from me. They, somebody was going in the Red Sea. Somebody was in the middle. Somebody was coming out. There are some wells that Jesus don't remove the stone till people get together. There are some things that will happen in a meeting like this that will never happen in a local assembly. There are some things, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you, get, when you get different people together, different flocks together, and you get in one mind and one accord, heaven, hey, hallelujah, heaven stands in attention. And there's somebody around your summers, they probably ain't just like you. But if you'll get your mind on the Lord and if you'll turn your attention to the Lord tonight you can have an opportunity to drink of a well you've never drunk out of tonight he'll move a stone and you can go to a place that God you've never been my soul's crying I feel like David is a heart pad after the water book I'm thirsty for you Lord I want to know you like I've never known you I want to see you like I've never saw you I want to touch you like I've never touched you I'm hungry for you I'm not just hungry for ministry. I'm not just hungry for a sermon. I want to know him. I want to touch him. I want to drink from a well. And as this man of God comes tonight, and Micah's already said it, but there's going to be an angel walk in this house and he's going to move a stone off of a well you've never drunk out of. You can sit back and worry. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's, somebody's going to notice you. Or you can make up your mind. I'm fighting devils when nobody's watching. I'm in the presence of God tonight. I want a drink. I need a touch. How do you laugh at me? Mock at me. I need a drink of water. And it's this man of God. <laughs> Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be amazing on a Tuesday night? Some of you live for the Lord 20, 30 years and then leave at the end of a road, a little service at a little country church and walk out of here and say, I've, I've never touched him like that. I've never been there before. I've never experienced that. But somebody lift your hands and say, I'm hungry for you. I'm just hungry for you. I'm just hungry. I'm hungry for you. I want you. I need you. I desire you. I'm hungry for you. Would you help me with the offering? Brother BJ, would you help me? Tony, would you help him? I'm hungry for you, Lord. I'm hungry for you. Blessed, blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. How many came hungry tonight to hear from this man of God? Drove a long ways to speak in our hearts. Came, sacrificed a lot. Left his family, his ministry. To come, brought these young men to come to speak into our life. Hallelujah. 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 
Would you just worship a little bit and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, Lord. I'm a little old Samuel. I'm a little old Samuel. I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. My, as I'm, I'm thirsty. My soul's hunger. I'm reaching for you, Jesus. I'm reaching for you. I'm reaching for you, Lord. I'm reaching for you, Jesus. I'd spend a little time with this man of God today and just, just precious, precious friend. And Pastor Craig, we love you. Would you give him a warm Tennessee welcome? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, well, uh, I'm thankful for the views, you guys. Uh, it's my first time being here. Uh, first time coming with Pastor. Um, but uh, when Brother uh, Anthony Wynn was saying, like, or uh, his son was saying that, like, when you give it, when you get tired, and like when he says, "Come to God, and I will give you rest," I think, like, when I say, "When I get tired," like when I work. Like when you guys work super, super late and you, and you say, oh, I can't wait to get home. I want to take a shower. I want to get, in, get into my pajamas and I want to go somewhere comfortable where I can rest. And like you go to your rest spot and you rest. So like when I think about that is like when like I go home, I take a shower. I say, I want to go sit down on the couch because that's where I'm most comfortable at is the couch. You, we all have different spots. We all, we're not all here the same. It's like, because Pastor preached uh, Sunday morning that, like, we're all at different stages. He preached about trees. He said, we, we, have, we have a seed, and then one that sprout, and then one's a tree, and then one that has fruit already. And he was saying that when you look and you, and you see, and if you, don't, and if you pick up a tree and you move it, its roots won't go deeper. But if you stay in your spot... And your roots will go deeper, and you will get more grounded into the ground. So when I was thinking thinking about that, that like we're all not in the same, we're not all in the same place that we're all going. We all have different callings. Like uh, I think I think he was talking about it yesterday that uh, we're all different different things. Like we all have different callings. And when pa brother Pastor Anthony went, when me and uh, brother Austin were talking to him yesterday, he was saying talking about seasons. And when I was thinking about having seasons, that like uh, we all we all had different callings. That like we're not all we're, some of us will have the same callings, but some of us will not have the same callings. When he was saying, when you have seasons, that uh, that it will come around. But if you miss it, then you have to wait again for that next season for for you to come back and pick it up. And it reminded me of one of our youth pastors, uh, Hannah Badger. She had. Uh, she came and preached because she felt like she really needed this, and she preached on picking up the mantle. And I was thinking that, like, because the devil is trying to take out the youth, us, because it's easier to get to the youth because you guys have already experienced everything. So he, that's why he comes and takes out us and, set, and, like, in the schools, he's trying to, like, redo genders and all that stuff. So when I was thinking that, like, he's, I started thinking more because she dropped the mantle on the ground, and I was thinking, I was like, who's going to pick up the mantle? Because if we don't pick up the mantle, then somebody else will come pick it up. And then so when you think and you look at the mantle, when I was looking at the mantle, I was like, I was thinking, I was like, should I pick it up? And I, I kept hesitating. I was like, should I pick it up? I shouldn't pick it up because if I pick it up and then because when you pick it up and all your younger friends, like in your friend group, and if you pick up the mantle and you start following God's call, people are going to start making like thinking different about you and think you're putting yourself higher than them. But there's some, there's some things that you got to do to put yourself higher and like, in, in like worship. But that doesn't mean like trade friends, like go find new friends and say, oh, those friends are not good for me. Those friends are good for me. There's some things, there's some friends that like you'll find out later in your life that they stuck with you for the rest of your life and that they were there at that point in time when you needed it. Sometimes they won't be there, and the only person you can go to is God, and that's who, who will give you rest. So. Hallelujah. Praise God. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Amen. What a presence of the Lord, the faithfulness of God. Amen. We are so honored to be here with you. 
Amen. Let's give your uh, man of God and his precious family a hand clap tonight. We're grateful for uh, them. We're grateful for what they mean to us and our lives. As we said last night, they are more than just uh, ministry friends and colleagues. They are uh, personal friends to us, and we're grateful for them. Amen. And uh, man, all that God is doing, as Pastor was showing us around today, and Mike is showing us around, amen, at the increase and in everything that God is doing, just precious. Can you say amen? And uh, the kingdom of God's being blessed, and uh, the vision's growing, and uh, that's what it's all about. Amen? And uh, I want to be a part of it, don't you? I want to be, uh, in, in southern terms, smack dab in the middle of it. Amen. You ever said that? I want to be smack dab in the middle of it. I want to be right in the middle of what God is doing. Lord, that old, that's other songs that Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss what you're doing. Can you say amen? Well, an honor to be here. Glad to see Pastor Mickey and them was here this week. Get to see them. Don't get to see them all the time. But glad they were here. Brother Robert Martin slipping in and uh, sacrificing of his time. He is such a busy young man, evangelist, and does a mission, so much mission work. But to be here, we appreciate him so very much uh, for being here. And Brother Dan Little here, uh, amen, with us last night and today, helping out with some things. It's just great to be with the, it ain't camp meeting, but it's almost like camp meeting. And uh, then got to go down uh, after I got back from lunch this afternoon, and I got to see Paul Paul win for just a little bit. And boy, did we have a time. If you go there to see him, you may go say you go to check on him, see him. He's going to see you, check on you. And he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, I'm going to sing, but you got to sing after I do. He said, I want to hear you sing. Did you sing last night? And I said, Yes, sir, I did. He said, Well, you're going to have to sing after I sing. And so he sung me a song, and he gave it everything he had. It was powerful. And then when he got finished, he said, I thought, you know, he done forgot about that. I, I don't sing a cappella. I don't sing good with piano, let alone a cappella. <laughs> but then when he got finished, he said, now you have to sing to me. And I thought I was just going to get out of it. And I went to say something. And Micah said, a deal's a deal. And I was like, hush, Micah. Praise God, a deal's a deal. So there I was having to sing. Amen. A cappella. Amen. But I'm tell you what, we had a time. It was a precious moment for, amen, my life and, and who he is and means to me. Amen. But we, we are grateful to be here with you, precious people. Amen. In this house. I'm grateful for what God did last night. I got burdened my heart so heavily. I, I preached just a few weeks ago at uh, Pastor Tommy Bates concerning offense and dealing with offense and dreaming and not being bitter. And uh, God has dealt with us this year concerning the subject of offense. Felt like the Lord so dealt with me uh, to, to preach on that last night. And Sister Brother Jerry's wife met me back there, and she's crying. And she said, Brother Greg, thank you. And she's crying. She said, I prayed. She said, I, I listened to you the other night at 1 o'clock in the morning preaching that. She said, and I have prayed and asked God, please let him preach that when he comes. Let him preach that. I said, well, then it's your fault. You the one, the reason why God wouldn't let me get away from that. I got pre had to preach that because you prayed for me to preach that. And uh, and I, so many asked, saying last night, you have listened to us over the last little bit at the church. But I was able to lay a little more foundation last night than I was at Pastor Tommy's because the Lord had moved so greatly. But this subject is so heavy, and it's something that that uh, we, we have to deal with. Brother Micah said to me today, he said, I think that needs to be preached almost once a year in every church. Because even in the middle of me preaching and dealing with that, you still have things that are happening on a daily basis and a weekly basis, and, and people are, are struggling with being offended and uh, easily offended. If we're not careful, we have perceptions of rejection that we live with, perceptions of betrayal, perceptions of rejection. Because we have faced it, and I've saw all of a sudden everything we see, we view that in. It's like this. 
and pastor today, as we begin to ride on the road, he, he's talking. And you know how he does. He brings stuff out that you ain't never thought of ever. And uh, he, he got to talking about a baby being born. And I, I ain't going to tell his. I, I, I done told him he's got to come to camp meeting and preach that. And I, I, I said, you got that in no, on notes? I'm thinking he's going to give me, be able to share with me his notes. He said, yeah, right here. I said, ah, oh, that ain't good enough. I, but everything that when he's in, he's thinking, he's got this perception in his mind and his heart that God is speaking to him. Now every story in that Bible comes to light through that perception. Things you never thought of, things that you never seen, all of a sudden now he's bringing that in to say, see here, this is what he meant here and here, here and here. And I'm telling you what, the stuff that he was saying was just un unbelievable. It's so powerful. But it's because he put now, I would have never seen that, but because he's given me that perception, I now see it. It's been there the entire time. It's a perception now that, so when I read that, I'm reading it through those glasses. That's the reason why the enemy fights us so hard. That's the reason why he attacks the home. It's the first thing that God, amen, ordained was the marriage, the home. Because the enemy knows if he can get us wounded, hurt early in our lives, then he has us right where he wants us. Then we begin to live, whether it's in our childhood, we suffered a bad relationship uh, uh, in, our, in our teenage years or whatever. You and I both know that most of the time, not, and watch this now, you're, you, you'll fall out with me or you're not careful, but this is the facts. That in my, in my youth groups, in our children, in our youth departments, in our departments throughout our church, one of the number one things that hinders us and halts us is drama. Amen. It's drama. This one don't like this. This one done not And all of this because all of a sudden, and, ever, and you'll be dealing with stuff, and all of a sudden you got somebody in that youth group that can just cause a ca ca chaos. Because of their perception of rejection. She don't like me. He doesn't like me. This one doesn't. And it's continually fighting and wrestling because the enemy knows how to set those traps. And he says the last days are going to be plagued with that. Offense. Many are going to be offended. And the love of many is going to wax cold. We're going to wear us out. We're going to be worn out through, through offense. That word offense comes from the Greek word scandalon. I'm going to go uh, to a deeper part of this and subject and on to something else tonight, but i got to finish this latter part. Uh, not really. There's so much more in it, but I'm just going to talk on this and then move on to something else here. The Greek word for offense is scandalon. We get our English word scandalized from that word. It means the bait of the trap. It is not the trap itself, but it's the bait that is on the trap. Can you say amen? And uh, as I preach this at the church concerning many of be offended, and he said it's impossible that you're not offended uh, to live in this life and not be offended. There's trap, and I said all these rat traps all over my stage. There was mouse traps everywhere, cheese on them. And I said these are the traps. Everywhere you turn, the opportunity to be hurt, to be offended, to be wounded, and it's everywhere. But I don't have to take the bait. Are you with me? The offense is there. I see it. The cheese is there. But I don't have to take the cheese. I don't have to take the bait. And so in our lives, you have to say, I understand that. But now I'm giving you a revelation if you get a hold of it. And some of y'all used that last night after church. I had several couples going down there saying, and when I got down there, and even in here, filio, they were calling each other filio. Amen. One man said, meet my filio. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. To his wife. Amen. And people, but I give you a revelation concerning that. It's the people failed us because they're living in a system of this fallen nature. 
self-centered love, selfish love, love that cannot uh, fulfill us, love that cannot satisfy us. And so all of a sudden you realize that. So then if you do that, you take away all that, that hatred and pain that you have and realize it's not them that hurt me. It's that fallen nature that we live in that hurt me. Can you say? Now, we don't like that because it gives us an excuse. Amen. Because they did say it. They did hurt me. They did betray me. They did let me down. They did disappoint me. And so you begin to realize Satan, the enemy of our souls, incorporates both of these strategies that he lays out before us, deceptive and deadly traps. If you're going to trap something, you want to camouflage it and you want to bait it good. Why? You don't want to see it as a trap and you don't and you want that bait to be enticing and the enemy amen places it there Jesus says to us it's impossible that it's not it's going to happen it's going to come it's not that I'm not going to have the situation and circumstances but it's the choice that I'm going to make with how that I deal with it I, it's there how am I going to handle it Satan along with his cohorts amen it, it is not as blatant as many believe. He's subtle. He delights in deception. He's shrewd in his operations. He's cunning. He's crafty. Amen. Don't forget, he can disguise himself as a messenger of lie. If we are not trained by the Word of God to divide rightly between good and evil, we won't recognize his traps for what they are in our lives. And one of the most deceptive traps and in insidious kinds of bait is something that every one of us encounter and that is offense actually offense itself is not deadly if it stays on the trap but if we pick it up and consume it and we feed on it in our hearts uh, then we have become offended and then we live with a perception of offense perception of rejection of done said perception of betrayal and we assume people are rejecting us. Amen. Only to find out the truth of the story. 87% of what we face, um, amen, is assumption. Only 13% of what we're offended over was intended. People don't just get up and say, I'm going to hurt people today. That's not the way it works. Things happen. Amen. People get uh, have bad hair days. Can you say amen? Uh, don't look at me like you're so sanctimonious tonight. Amen. I, I look at my family. When I'm tired, I'm wore out, and I done got ill. Come on, somebody. I done smarted off at them. Amen. Because uh, I'm ill and frustrated. Amen. And then the whole house wants to shut down, and I want to look at them and say, I just had a moment. I'm not the only one. And then I look over there at her, and she's upset because I done hurt her feelings. Come on, somebody. And I'm like, come on, don't make the whole day over this. <laughs> and all the children in the ride on the trip that we're on, especially if you're trying to go on vacation, come on, or driving somewhere. Come on, it's so hilarious. Some of those memes they put out where the dads done, and it had a meme of all the kids in here on them. And said the way it looks like on Sunday mornings on the way to church, how the dad done towed us all off. Amen. But he's sitting there smiling, trying to go, but I'm, I just had a moment. It ain't going to ruin the rest of the day. Come on, somebody. But we don't get up intending to hurt each other, but it happens. And most of the time, amen, because of our perception. I was reading a lady that writes, she does some writing. She's talking about a lady uh, at, at the gym. She said, she don't like me. She's this, this, and this, and this. And because of the way the woman responded to her, and she was not even listening. And come to find out, she went through almost three months, and she just built this entire story in her mind, only to find out, amen, that what it was. Anybody ever been there? Find out that what it was was nothing to what you perceived it was but it's because you've been rejected in your life that you begin to look at everybody through that lens 
Come on, somebody. We've got marriages that are facing that. Amen. They have ne- the husbands never rejected them, but because of a childhood of rejection or other relationships of rejection, now they face that in their life. But I come to tell you tonight, there's healing in the bomb of Gilead. There's healing for your heart, healing for your mind, healing for your emotions. Uh, praise God. You don't have to live the rest of your life offended. You don't have to live the rest of your life bitter. Can you say amen? Praise God. Amen. I, I feel the Holy Ghost going to help us tonight. Amen. I, I was in a church one time preaching in South Georgia. I'm, I, I just tell you like that. They, there was an entire movement there. An entire movement. Watch this. An entire movement. I, and I was an evangelist. And, and, and I didn't allow a politics to, to push me to where I who could preach for and who I couldn't preach for. If the door opened, I just took at God. Amen. Had opened the door and I trusted him to shut it if it ain't his will. And so they asked me to pre- I'm preaching in these churches, but they had split years ago. A split, I mean, completely split years ago, and they don't fellowship each other. Pentecostal, both movements, Pentecostal, both movements were holiness, conservative lifestyle, living people, but they, they were separated. I'm almost down the middle. There's 34 40 churches in one movement and 30, 40 churches in another. I'm preaching in some of those churches. Some of these kids, I've grown up, it's been over a 20 year split now. And they, 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 they eat in the same restaurants in the same town. Amen. Pastor Mickey can share this with me. He, you, he lived in that area and can tell you they'd eat in the same restaurants and not even know who each other are because they did not coincide or, 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 or come together. Amen. He he was in the latter part of it. But here I am, an 18, 19 year old evangelist. I'm just ignorant enough. I don't know anything about the split. I don't know anything of what they went through. But they, some of them hate each other. And here they are, amen, filled with the Holy Ghost, supposedly filled with the Holy Ghost, living clean lives. But they're trapped because of bitterness and offense. And, and, and they're ineffective. Amen. Come on, are you with me tonight? That's what the enemy wants to do with us. He wants to get us to a place where we're ineffective. We're not impacting the world the way we should be impacting the world. And so here I am preaching. All of a sudden, I get the phone call. Would you preach our youth camp this year, Brother Atkins? I said, I would love to preach a youth camp this year. I said, what week it is it? They told me. I said, yes, I'm open that week. I'd love to preach your youth camp. Amen. And lo and behold, I was in revival at a church in the other movement that same week. And all of a sudden, the youth director of that movement, the other movement said, hey, we really have met and feel like God wants you to come preach our youth camp this year. I said, what week is it? And it was the week after the other one. So I said, I'm going to be in the area. I'll preach you that one. Then come over to you. I didn't tell them that. I'm just thinking I'll do that. It'll work. I'm going to preach Saturday. Amen to Friday. Then I'll be off Friday night and I'll preach that one starting Saturday. Well, honey, I'm telling you what, I didn't know what I'd got myself in a hornet's nest. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm a young evangelist. They love for me to come, but now I'm in trouble. Come on, somebody, because the flyers are going up and guess who's preaching? The night speaker's preaching both of them. Amen. Come on, somebody. And so I'm preaching this one. But the young people from that other one, amen, loved me and was friends with me. And so they didn't know about the split. And they did know that they really didn't fellowship. But they were like, I don't care. I want to go hear Brother Greg. So here they come. They're coming over to this youth camp. And then they, the matter of fact, they start registering. And some of them started getting in this year. Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, you know they were deacons in that movement from the other movement that were sitting on their porch right down the road from that camp writing down the church names of the vans and reported it in the board meeting that this church came to this youth camp amen they had a board meeting against it come on somebody but I'm going to tell you what happened that younger generation were so hungry amen the youth leader said the youth leader said to me brother Greg I got the Holy 
Holy Ghost right down there 20 years ago. I got saved right down there. I haven't been here in 20 years. Amen. That generation that was kids when it went down are now grown ups. And all of a sudden they realize and we're not having anything to do with each other over a 20 year old fallout that I feel like preaching to you a little while tonight. I'll tell you how silly this stuff is. I, I, there's two, two, two main Pentecostal churches in one area. There's another. I'm going to tell you this real quick and jump back to that one I, that I preached for. And now one guy preached for this one a couple of times and they heard about me from them. They ended up giving me, come to find out they had been a split years ago and that's how there's two separate churches. And come to find out the split was over a fundraising auction where two men got to auction and then for a pen that somebody was selling and got mad at each other and the family both was influ influential and ended up getting mad at each other and bitterness crept into their heart and they ended up splitting it. Now there's two total different Pentecostal churches over the auction of a pen. You don't think this is the problem. Amen. You, 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 you're, you're, you're not looking at things right. Amen. Now I'm going back. I mean, they're bringing their young people. They're saying, uh, and God starts moving. Well, heaven comes down. God starts filling that place. We, we had softball. We got done with softball, walked in, amen, and, and did a skit thing. When he did the Holy Ghost fail, when the Holy Ghost fell somewhere around 2.30, 3 o'clock, amen, it's 7.30. Church starts at 8. I'm still in my softball clothes. I've got sweat beads running down my face. I said, the, the director said, you better go get a shower. There's 20 some kids laid out across that place filled with the Holy Ghost from both movements. Come on somebody. Uh, praise God. Uh, I went to get my shower. When I did a door they knocked on my door. It's 7.55 now. They knocked on my door. I'm trying to shower. Amen. I, I had to get dressed. I opened the door and it's the youth director's son. Come on somebody. And the main director's son, assistant director's son. And they're weeping. They said we want the baptism I said God I feel you right now and he filled them right in the doorway of my room that I was sleeping in praise God heaven came down honey they tried to start church at 8 couldn't do it it broke out and went to 2 o'clock in the morning amen starving, hadn't ate anything. I said, I'm going to, amen, to Taco Bell. Praise God. Amen. Or to Waffle House. Taco Bell done closed. Amen. And so I took four or five, four or five brand new Holy Ghost field kids, amen, to Waffle House because they had done been out in the spirit since 2.30. Hadn't ate anything. I got to the Waffle House. I'm trying to order. They're talking in tongues. I want the waitress said what in the world's happened I've come to tell you God is not frivolous to our emotional come on bitterness and hatred God said I'm fixing to do something about this I'm telling you there ain't nothing that God can't do there ain't nothing that he can't fix I realized I'm in trouble. I said, get it to go. And I took four of them. I took them all back to the truck. They're shouting in the parking lot. They're late. I got one and I done had to put him in the back of the truck. Come on, somebody. Got my food to go. I pulled back up to the campgrounds at 3 o'clock and they're shouting all over the parking lot. So, and I'm did over 20 something had received the baptism that are still in ministry today. Praise God. There's a healing. And when God heals the stroke of the wound of his people, it'll be like the shining of the sun seven days in one. <laughs> Woo! If you'll let it go, he'll heal you. If you, can, if you can give it to God, He'll heal you. Your home will be healed. Your family will be healed. Your heritage will be healed. Your lineage will be healed. Praise God. Amen. I end that on Friday. Guess what happens? All of them don't want it to end. So they follow to the nether camp. Amen. 
that camp ends on Friday. Some of them from that camp's done been here and done been at the camp all week. They all come together. Now, this deacon board's wanting to have a meeting on me that I'm causing trouble. Come on, somebody. And they got a list of the names and the tags of the church people that came to this camp. But guess what? They couldn't stop what God was doing. Now they all come, and they had a fluctuation. About 50 kids from that camp came to this camp, and they got more than they've ever had. Amen. And guess what? It was the mark of a breakthrough of a 20-year bitterness, envy. Praise God. Now they have married into one another. Now they have joined. And now you would only know the difference by the names of the churches. There is no difference. They fellowship each other. They preach for each other. And they're not, they didn't come back together in a movement uh, but they are now one in the kingdom of God uh, why because we are not in competition with one another we're in combat uh, to a lost and dying world amen lift your hands right now and say we're in combat but that's the will of the enemy to shut it down. I was in one of those churches preaching. After that, I preached. And you know, uh, amen, I preached and, and, and the Lord had helped me. We had a move of God. And God was helping us. Amen. But I'd been in that church four times. Amen. Four different years. Amen. And God would move mildly. They had a deacon in that church. I knew as a brother, you know, know most people. Amen. But all of a sudden, I preached that night on bitterness. Not this, this was years ago. I preached on bitterness. And I said, because there's real strong conservative church. I said, if I'm preaching holiness, you shout me down. I said, but I'm here tonight to preach on envy. I'm here tonight. I said, anybody can put on a sleeve. Any, come on, somebody. Anybody can put on the clothes. I said, but that envy and that jealousy, amen, that bitterness that you have, you can dress it up, but it don't mean it's not there. Come on, somebody. I preach on forgiveness. I said, you wouldn't dare watch this. I said, but you're bitter and you hate one another. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, it was tough. You could have heard a pin drop in that place. It was dead as 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm weeping because I'm burdened and I'm preaching what God's given me. Amen. And it ain't going nowhere. The pastor's not even saying amen. I mean, it's, it's, he, he's gone now. And I, I'd say this now. He, he just sat there and looked, thinking, not thinking, myself I miss God but I'm telling you right now amen I did miss God one of the main men in that church he'd sat about second or two three rows he's the headboard deacon amen all of a sudden that night I gave the altar call nobody really prayed nobody really come down and cried very much amen I left there thinking that's the worst preaching I ever done in my life amen are you with me tonight amen I'm broken amen Kaylee asked me last night said how did it go I said well I, I pretty good and she said how did you? I said I don't think I did pretty good at all I said I think I kind of struggled and she said I don't want to talk to you no more I want to talk to Austin Let Austin tell me what you did praise God he'll tell me the truth I know you you being a come on amen but but I did I felt that way but I'm telling you right now we started church the next night amen the deacon ain't there I thought God I done run people off all of a sudden that deacon come in that front door are you listening to me tears streaming down his face he's shouting in the foyer he opens the door to the sanctuary going whoa 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 he's a shouting all over the place and he didn't stop at his seat this time he didn't stay at the third row he came on the platform into the choir and he's a shouting like a new convert he's dancing and talking in tongues and I'm thinking to myself what in the world has happened to this man I've been here four years he's never moved he don't even raise his hands but he is in revival his season done came praise God hallelujah he's being visited by God he sat there are you listening to me the leader of that church all of a sudden halfway through the second song they stopped the whole thing he said I can't take it no 
more. He said, I got to testify. Amen. Pastor said, go ahead. He said, last night, that preacher was preaching on bitterness. He said, I, I do my best to live a clean life. He said, but I have hatred in my heart. He said, me and my sister fought over mama's stuff 20 years ago. Said, we haven't spoken since. She took part of mama's stuff. Amen. And all that jealousy hit. Come on, somebody. Uh, praise God. I'm telling you right now. Uh, amen. Amen. Praise God. All of a sudden, he said, I ain't spoke to her in 20 years. She's crippled now in a wheelchair. He said, we see each other at Walmart. She said, or the grocery store. He said, she'll go, she'll turn and go down one aisle and I'll go down the other. He said, out of 20 years, he said, I'm sitting in this church last night. I've covered it up for 20 years. He said, the hatred in my heart. He said, but last night I told God, if you'll let me see the sun come up in the morning, I'm going to fix it. I'm I'm going to call sissy and I'm going to make it right. He said the sun came up. I couldn't even sleep. He said I called her. He said when the time she answered and heard my voice I said sissy. She said called his name. He said I want you to know I'm so sorry for having the hatred in my heart and bitterness and he said I want to talk to you and she said Bubby I want to talk to you I'm sorry and they, all they needed was one to take the step and all of a sudden 20 something years of hatred uh, is turned into uh, how many years have we wasted over this stuff uh, how many souls have we not reached uh, because of offense He said, we talked. She cried. He said, I cried. He said, all of a sudden, she said, I'm cooking breakfast if you want to come. He said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Praise God. He said, not only did we talk on the phone, but I went to her house and he said, we ate breakfast and I stayed until lunchtime and we ate lunch together. He said, I just left while I go, just in time to get ready. He said, I want you to know the Holy Ghost feels better than bitterness does. He he said, I've carried that bitterness for 20 some years, uh, but it don't feel nothing like this. Uh, it don't feel like this does. Uh, oh, what I've wasted. Uh, I come to tell you tonight, you ain't got to carry it another day, uh, another hour, uh, another minute. Uh, lift your hands and say, Lord, if you'll give me the opportunity. Hallelujah. That heaviness that comes through bitterness. Come on, somebody. Come on, lift your hands right now. Say, Lord, if you'll help me, I'm going to fix it. Even if I wasn't the one that felt like I'm the reason why it happened, I'm going to fix it. Don't, don't, y get on, don't you get upset with me now. Because Jesus said, if you come to this altar, and you remember... Your brother's got an alt against you. Or you got an alt against your brother. He said, you leave your gift at that altar. And you go fix that. And then you come back. You can't take your gift with you. And we wonder why. Come on, somebody. That we can have what we have around these altars, but it don't go home with us. Somebody, I don't know about you, but I want to take it home with me. Woo! I want to take it home with me. Oh, I feel this so heavy on my heart. I'm trying to move forward, but I feel this, amen, in my heart right now. The enemy, why, why does he want that? Because he don't want me, amen, to be a dreamer. He don't want me, amen, to, to, to believe the thing that God's got. Because when you lose focus and your vision is impaired, the Bible said where there is no vision, the people perish. The other translation, it talks about the law of God in the second part of that. We read the first, the vision, people perish. But it said, 
that he that takes it to the law, it talks about the law, I can go read it, but I don't have time to run up there. But I want you to see this. Another translation said, he that keeps his eyes, amen, on the goal, can you say amen, is filled with all the fullness. Amen. Joy, Holy Spirit fills my life. When I am looking at the dream, the enemy doesn't want me to have a vision. He don't want me to have a dream. He wants me to get my eyes off on people. People fail. People let me down. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I love this man of God, but my trust is not in this man of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? My trust is in him. He's never failed me. He's never disappointed me. 34 years and he's never disappointed me you come on somebody hallelujah come on somebody i've been there where i got hurt with him are you understanding me amen are you hearing me because he didn't move when i thought he would move he didn't work when i thought he would work amen Come on, are you with me? Can I, can I talk just about a minute before I move on here? Amen. Because when you get hurt with God, that you can wrestle with stuff in your heart. It's like Jacob when he had Leah. Amen. He worked seven years for Rachel. But at the end of the seven years, he got Leah. And the Bible said when he opened up the curtain that morning, amen, behold, it was Leah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are you with me now? Amen. They done deceived him. He worked seven years with everything he had. And now he was wakes up and behold that word behold is a long thing there because can you imagine the disappointment because he had counted down the days I'm marrying Rachel I'm going to live with Rachel I'm going to get the prize but when he woke up that next morning he ain't with Rachel he's with Leah come on somebody amen he now runs amen to his father-in-law's house or his tent what's the prize you can't get the 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 the, 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 the baby girl before you get the older girl. She got to be married first. Uh, and so he tricked him. Amen. Are you hearing me? But if you still want Rachel, you work another seven years uh, and I'll give her to you. But I'm thinking at the same time, where's she at in all this? Come on. I'm sure she was hurting herself because she thought I'm getting married and she's not. But I can't help but see Jacob running out of that tent. Amen. Because she's probably up at there at the well where they met. And he's calling, Rachel, I still want you. Come on. I don't know about you, but I've been there in my ministry, in my life, where I gave it everything that I had. I prayed and sought the face of God. But I woke up, and it wasn't Rachel in my tent. It was Leah. Are you listening to me? Come on, somebody. Now I've got to climb in that pulpit. Am I, is it rare? Come on. I'm, I'm settling for Leah. Amen. When Rachel's what I fell in love with, that's how many are. And we've lived our lives with Leah's dissatisfaction. Come on, somebody. I heard the Lord say to me one time when I seen that, do you still want Rachel? After all of this, I said, yes, I want Rachel. What do you mean? He said, you preach, but not with the same passion that you did the first seven years. You sing, but not with the same passion you did the first seven years. You serve, but not with the same passion you did the first seven years. Why? Nothing shuts down desire like disappointment. Yeah. Two of my greatest friends on earth that lost out with God. Lost out with God because they fasted, prayed, and believed so deeply on something. And it didn't happen. Disappointed. I don't want to bog down in this. Because it's heavy. But you can be disappointed in people. But when you get disappointed in God. You still pray for people. But you don't pray like the same. Like you did the first seven years. Come on, you know I'm preaching right. There ain't no way that boy went out there and swept that farm like he did them first seven years. Because in first seven years, he was, he, was, he was serving for what he was getting. But when you don't know what you're going to get no more because you done been disappointed. Yeah. 
It ain't easy, folks. And I'm going to tell you, it ain't a prayer you can get over and pray through in a minute either. It ain't something you're going to get over in a day. It's took agonizing. Agonizing. Wrestling with God. Why? And then I understand that God embraces my humanness. Did you understand that? He's okay with my why. He said it on the cross. He also says, cast all your care upon me. That word translates anxiety, all your frustrations, all your cares. Now, you ain't talking bad to him, but come on, somebody, you can cast your anxiety on him. I don't, I don't understand you right now. David's looking at God. He said, I don't understand you because the heathen is blessed. But look what I'm going through. They, you, come on, somebody. Boy, you, don't get too quiet on me here. I, I didn't get married until I was 26. I sought the face of God. Somebody said, when you get married? I said, you'll know it. They said, what do you mean? I said, he'll speak so loud, y'all going to hear him. He was 26 when I got married. All I ever wanted was to get married to a good woman. And I wanted to have a family. That's my whole heart and life. That's my family. Now I'm married. We got a baby on the way. I'm so excited. And she's a nurse. And works in the doctor's office. And so right across the halls, the, the ultrasounds. And so we got to hear the heart beat early. And we got to see the baby early. It's happening. And then all of a sudden, one afternoon, she ain't feeling well. And so she walks over and says, hey, will you just check everything, make sure everything's all right? And a friend checked her, and she said, well, Jess, I don't, I'm not hearing no heartbeat today. So then we're in a frenzy. So then we got, you know, we're in a mess. And so the next morning, we got an appointment. And I'm sitting, boy, y'all don't look at me like this now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be raw with you right here. I'm sitting in a room full of about six to seven women with three and four and five kids for money. Because the more kids they got, the more checks they get. Don't, don't y'all fall out with me here. Y'all know the system. They don't care about God nor the purpose of God. They ain't planning on raising them kids right. And I'm sitting here. I give you my life. Give you everything. And now I'm in this predicament. My doctor looks at us. He suggests they ain't, I don't hear a heartbeat. He said, but it could be our machines. Could be things. Could be the way it's turned. Maybe just a tad early. He says, that's one reason why we don't do this like this and let people do this. But now we've done let you and all this. He said, I'll tell you what, let's give it a week and we'll pray over it. Can you say amen? So we're going to pray for a week. Yeah. I'm at a youth camp preaching, 500, 300 and something kids, about 500 at night. We leave the next morning, drive all the way home for the next week for him to tell her it's not, a heart, it's, it's not living. It's, it's, it's gone. As a matter of fact, your body is starting to abort it. And said, if you, we're going to give you a week for your body to abort it itself. If it doesn't abort it, then we are going to take it. So now we get back in the three-hour drive and drive all the way back to the youth camp. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Now watch this. I've got to walk out in the midst of all of them people that could care less about having children for God. Come on, you're, are you with me? I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I was not on top of the world. Behold, Leah. And the enemy saying, look what you got. Look how he did you. Look what he gave you. Come on, somebody. I got back. She's crying. I know she's a woman of God. If I've ever known she's a woman of God, she's a woman of God. But I'm watching her curl her hair, getting ready to go preach. I'm laying on the bed. I'm already dressed. Waiting for her to finish so we could walk over. I got to preach that night. I watch her cry and tears drip off her chin. And she stopped and hold the 
the, 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 the sink. She's weeping and fixing her hair. We join hands, walk across that hundred and something yards to the, to the tabernacle. She climbs in that pulpit. She sings like she always sings. I take that pulpit and preach like I always preach. Because the responsibility is still there. But I am telling you, I am not in a worshiping mode. Then that woman of mine gets in that altar. Prays four kids through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Knowing that that that's in her womb is dead. Are you hearing me? That was not a pretty picture for us. Are you listening to me? Why, God? Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, there's some of you in this building. Amen. You still saved. You still filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But you wrestle with disappointments in your life. And God can't use you like he wants to use you. Because you have defenses and walls. Come on, somebody. And you quit dreaming a long time ago because what's the sense in dreaming when it don't happen every time? Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. It's John. John saw him, laid him in the water. Brother, Brother Anthony laid him in the water. He come up out of the water. He heard the voice say, this is my beloved son. I, the, the spirit of the Lord descended in the bodily shape of a dove. He, he, he's got his hands on the son of God. Can you imagine? He's got his hands on him. He experienced the spirit descending like a dove. And he hears a voice. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You can't get more real than than that but on the day he's getting his head cut off tomorrow he calls his disciples he said boys come here he said I need you to go find him if you can find him make sure he is the one because I'll give my head if he's the one what do you mean is he the one you have you touched him you've grown up with him you are the forerunner of him you're questioning every you tell my Hallelujah. Ain't nothing break you like disappointment to break you. Come on, somebody. John said, you find him. And when you find him, I want to know, is he the one? John, you touched him. You saw the spirit descend like a dove. You heard the voice. I know, but I'm going to lose my head tomorrow. I'll, I can take it if I know he. Amen. They find him. And guess what they find? The Bible said they were there. Many to be healed. Did you hear that? You got to watch the word. You ready? Because here it comes. The Bible said many. Amen. They, there's a crowd flocked him to be healed. And the Bible said he healed many of them. Other places he healed them. He healed all them. But in this particular one, he healed many of them. Which means they were some that did not get healed. So that means you got a family sitting here with a blind child and he touches them and they're healed. While another family sitting right beside them and he walks on to another person and their child's not healed. That means you got a dead uh, child laying here, a dead mama laying here. He raises her while there's another family going, we're neck, and he moved on to somebody else. Uh, he healed many of them. Now how do you sit in the crowd of people and you the ones that you're fighting child gets healed or your daddy gets healed or your mother gets healed but yet amen you're rejoicing but there's people in the same crowd in the same that he just chooses not to touch and you don't understand why are you with me tonight that's the human side of us amen praise God he healed many of them in the Bible can you imagine leaving that meeting amen with your child not being healed while those others are being healed envy's going to sit in but he tells us not to be envious how can I not be envious when it's my child how can I not be envious? Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this, uh, John's disciple sees him. 
And they said, listen, John has sent us to you. He wants to know, are you the one or should we look for another? He said, you ready for these words? You'll remember it. Now see the perception, the glasses is on. Now you're going to see it. You might have didn't see it before, but you're going to see it now. He says, you go tell John what you saw. The lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, the dumb talk, and the dead are raised to life again. Amen. And blessed is he who is not offended in me. Blessed is a man that can walk home from a meeting with a deaf child while you watch your neighbors go home with a healed deaf child. Blessed is the man that can go home and bury the dead while others are rejoicing that theirs was resurrected. Blessed is the man that cannot have his prayers answered, but he still worships. Blessed is he that ain't offended in me. Oh, God, help me preach tonight. Oh, there is a healing in this house. He might have didn't answer when you thought he would have answered. He might have didn't heal when you thought he would have healed. He might have didn't touch when you thought he would have touched. He might have didn't break through when you thought he's going to break through. But he's still God. And blessed is he that can worship when he didn't do what he thought he ought to do. When the on time God didn't show up on time. Lift your hands all over this house. Blessed is he who's not offended in me. Blessed is the preacher's wife who can have a dead child in her womb and still pray for her kids through to the Holy Ghost. Praise God. We didn't know it then. All we know is it's going to be like this from now on, but we got three beautiful children biological children. We got three adopted children. Hallelujah. We are far from that now. Are you understanding me? But them days were dark. Oh God, they were dark. Praise God. I crossed every T. I dotted every I. I kept my ministry clean. I didn't go out with the rest of the young people because I didn't want nobody to say anything. I didn't hardly this, this, and this because I want to make sure I kept my reputation right, my image right. But you let them lie on me. You let them lie on me. And politics of religion cause, come on, without finding the truth, because the Bible, come on, don't y'all look at me funny, because I want to tell you, the Antichrist spirit is already here. We don't want truth. We just, because we, we, come on, we take and run off of stuff that we, come on, somebody. And we don't even ask. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right here. These two guys are with me right now, and I love them. I'm glad they're with me. But I'm going to tell you, that ain't no reason why they're with me. It ain't just because I want them to come with me. I want them here. Amen. There's another reason. Hallelujah. For accountability where I can say where I was, when I was, and how I was. Come on, somebody. That's the reason why Billy Graham would rent out the entire floor of a motel. Because I have to know where I'm at. Come on, you say, Pastor, why you got to live that? Because there's too many haters out there that love to do something to try to destroy your ministry. Come on, you dot every I and cross every T and the enemy still allows it. Come on, somebody. Praise God. I'm not here tonight because, I, come on, are you here? I'm here by the help and the grace of God of his mercy and accountability that knows where I'm at. And come on, you listen to me preach right now. I dotted the I, crossed the T, and he still lets some lie, and he lets them get by with it. I don't understand that. But the fact is, blessed is he that ain't offended in me. I'm not talking about just now. I'm talking, this is earlier in my ministry. I'm telling you, when I went to worship, praise you, I love you. But it wasn't the same love that I had when I was 15 years old. Old. 
I preach, but it wasn't with the same love. I'm going to reach out and try to help people. But when the people that you love and help the most turn their back on you and run you down like a dog, you get, come on, you, the, the hand that gets bit, you quit feeding the dogs because the dogs bite you. Come on, somebody. And so, therefore, you're not loving like you've never been hurt. You're not pastoring like you've never been hurt. You're not preaching like you've never been hurt. You're not giving like you've never been hurt because five families let you down. Now, come on, somebody. I'm preaching to myself in this too because I'm going to tell you amen that's what the Lord began to deal with me you got to love like you've never been hurt you got to serve like you've never been hurt you got to dream like you've never been hurt amen blessed is he who's not offended in me praise God I don't have time to stay on all this this is a lot. But I'm telling you right now, I want you to lift your hand just for a moment so I can move on and say, Lord, if you'll help me, I want Rachel. I still want Rachel. I'm going to worship you. And I want healing in my life. One of the most precious women in my church right now. She's one of the most sweetest, givenest. Precious woman. Her and her husband's going to retire. And they're going to travel the world. And two months out of retirement, he gets cancer. And so instead of the first year of enjoying, she watches him suffer. Believing to the last breath that God's going to heal him. And he didn't heal him. We buried him. She's having a hard time. Does it get raw in here? That little woman of mine is the most God-fearing, tender-hearted, loving, God-praying woman. She just begged God. Her daddy's talking. His heart, the surgeon looks at him and said, you have 95% success rate. We're going to do this surgery on you and everything's going to be all fine. It's just the 4th of July weekend. We're going to wait he starts having a massive heart attack at 11 o'clock. And they watched him have a heart attack. They called the, the doctor on charge and the doctor on charge on call. She heard the nurses say, he said he ain't coming in. Just give him some pain medicine. Before they wheel him out, after three and a half hours of laying there, he starts vomiting. That, that heart stuff that lets you know he's in cardiac arrest. And by the time they got him out and downstairs to do the surgery, he was done gone and he had to massage his heart. But I'm going to tell you that little woman of mine, blessed is he who ain't offended in me. She watched me kneel down and pray for my granddaddy and say, God, give me two more years so my kids can enjoy him the way I did. And God gave me 12 years, not two. And the, are you listening? I was on the stage, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me in the middle of nothing. I'm done. And said, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, you had enough time? She knows all that. She looked at me. This is the first time I've said this. But she looked at me. She said, Greg, I don't quite understand. Why he did it for you. But he didn't do it for me. Why did he give your daddy, your granddaddy, 12 years? She said, I just, I don't understand it either, baby. But he's still God. I've watched her pray herself through it. I've watched her weep and cry. I've watched her get herself up. I've watched her pray herself through it. Praise God. She's going to fly out thirsty for a women's conference. I've watched her have to push her away, but she's there. Blessed is he who ain't offended in me. Can you lift your hands all over this house? Man alive. Oh, 
I knew this is heavy. I've just got to get through this part right here. Because sometimes it ain't just disappointment in people. It's disappointed and offended with God. But there's a healing in this house. And God says, when I heal you, to be like the seven sons in one day. Seven days of sunlight in one day. How many say I want that kind of healing? No, because I'm going to tell you, when you get offended, you get hurt. You, 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 your decisions are dangerous. Because Cora, we don't know why Cora. Cora was in line to take. He, he should have got the position in the first part of Numbers. And this only thing we can come up with the fact, because he should have, but he didn't. He didn't get it, Pastor. Aaron got it because God told Moses to give it to Aaron. The Bible doesn't say why Korah didn't get it. The Bible doesn't say why. Korah's still going to get to be in the temple. I'm going to touch this and run, okay? Korah's still going to get to be in the temple. He's still going to be around the shoe bread. He's still going to be between, he's going to be in the ark, right there where the ark of covenant is. He's still going to have the incense of prayer. He's just not in charge. And he gets bitter. And here's the problem. We find in Numbers later on, when the bitterness and the, and the, and, and the revolt came, Korah connected to Reuben's sons. The sons of Reuben. Why does that matter? You got to go find out who Reuben was. He was the son of Jacob that Jacob said, You are, you was this, this, and this, and this, but you were unstable as water. You did what you wanted when you wanted. You had no principles. When you are hurt, the worst thing you can do is connect with people. Of no principle. You want to pull the people who will victimize you. You are hurt and you want to pull the people who will feel sorry for you. Come on somebody. Wrong. Find you somebody that will have compassion but they got principles. And they're going to look at you and say. I know you're hurting. And I know it shouldn't have happened, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They're going to love you, but they're going to give you principle. They're going to look at you and say, though a righteous man falls seven times, he can get up. They're going to look at you and say, blessed is he who's not offended. I know you don't understand God. And I know you don't know why he didn't answer you. But one day he will understand it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You need to connect to people. You need to get right. You don't need to stay out of church. Are you watching me online? You need to go back to the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to go back to the house of God and get you beside a granny that'll look at you and say, I understand, baby, but you can't let it get in you. Amen. You can, that's why water don't sink. Come on, don't sink the boat unless water gets in the boat. You're in the water. You're on top of the water. Just don't let it get in you. His many's going to be offended. It's impossible not to get offended. Come on, our offense is to come. It's impossible that they come they're going to come he said but don't let it get in you keep it out of you oh Cora you should have connected to people who had principle in their lives I don't have time to stay here but we connect with people with no principles it's dangerous and then watch this and I don't have time we can stay here for a while Cora then has 250 princes join him and they are either misinformed or uninformed. And they've only heard one side of the story. And Korah's leading them in a parade against the man of God. You better, I feel the Holy Ghost, you better be careful who you parade behind. Because you're not careful, the bitterness that you've been hiding can get. And when something comes up, you're like, oh, how can you jump on the bandwagon because you had bitterness against that person anyway. And now you're on the bandwagon on the parade. 
250 uninformed or misinformed. You can't just go by what you see. What you hear for sure, but 90% what you see. Because now God's going to have to deal with you. And everybody connected to Korah. God makes a show in front of everybody. The earth opens up and swallows them. And you ready for this? A ple- then they, even after that, they, 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 they question. And Aaron runs out because a plague hits them. Go read it. And the one they frustrated with, because Aaron's the one in position that got the position, he runs out with an incense of prayer and stands between the plague and them. And he prays. <laughs> that incense of prayer he's praying and the Bible said the plague stayed Woo! God can heal you to the point amen you're the one standing between the plague and the people you hated and the people you were hurt at and the people you were offended at praying for come on Anybody helping me preach? They mean before this, though, what you got to see too, I didn't miss this part, is Moses said, Korah, you get some incense. Amen. And you get all your parade with incense. And y'all get, you know what he was saying? If I can just get them in this altar, incense of prayer. That's what they had. He said, if I can just get them up here, maybe they'll get prayed through. Maybe that Moses was trying to stop this. Come on. Amen. Are you hearing me right now? But God has a way of healing you until prayer will come into your heart and into your life. Amen. You got to get with people that are pray. Amen. The third thing Cora messed up in doing is he looked at what he did not have and forgot what he did have. He looked at what he did not get and forgot I'm in the table of shoe bread. I'm over here with the candlesticks. I'm in here with the Ark of the Covenant behind the veil. If you're not careful you'll look at what you didn't get and what you're a victim of and you'll forget all about he filled me with the Holy Ghost he put my marriage back together he moved in my life get your eyes off what you didn't get get your eyes off what he didn't do and get it on what you have praise God I gotta quit I'm going to tell you something. Now get off on the carnal side of things in this life. Amen. But I, I, this is really powerful to me. And the Lord revelated this to me. We got kids and young people that feel like they done done. It's over for their lives. I'm like, you're 13 years old and it's over. <laughs> Teenage suit. We just had a girl the second day of school kill herself. 12 years old. Revivals broke out because of it. And we got revival. I'm just going to have to speak at it. Every week, we're doing, they've been doing fifth quarters and it's broke loose. Come on, somebody. That's fifth quarters like the thing after the football game. But now we're having them on Thursdays when we don't even have a football game at home because the kids are so hungry. But how are you 12 years old and feel like you don't got nothing to live for? The enemy's lying to you. Can I tell y'all this? I want you to see this. Because I want you to know, I wish I could have talked to her. Praise God. I wish I could have talked to her. And God, what are you thinking, baby? What's going through your mind that you can't live another day, 12 years old? Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I know some people might have didn't listen to you and they were bullying you. But if you could have just took, come on, you understand it breaks your heart. But I'm going to tell you something, baby. You're not, if life is like a game, like football, you have your pregame warm-up. That's what I like. I like to get there for the pregame warm-up because my baby's out there, you know. He's going to throw the ball. He's the second quarterback because the coach's nephew's the quarterback, you know. So I, he's out there, and he's throwing the ball, and I like to watch him. Amen, because he can throw. But amen. I like to watch him throw. I like to watch him practice. I like to watch him do his thing. 
Praise God. But you know what? I'm, I done got videos and then my phone's done dying and I'm done losing space and the game ain't even started yet. It's just pre-game warm-up. Praise God. Hallelujah. He don't even got his pads on except for his pants. Amen. And his little shirt thing. It ain't even game time yet. That's just the pre-game. I'm telling you, some of you are so young, you're not even, amen, you're not even started the game yet. You're just in pre-game and you're done ready to quit. You're done ready to give up. Come on, but I'm telling you right now, you're just in the pregame. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not even in the first quarter or the second quarter. Amen. Are you hearing me? But some of us are in the first quarter. Amen. Of our lives. And you ready to quit. You think it's over. Amen. It ain't over. You're just in the first quarter. But they're beating us by three touchdowns. It's all right. Praise God. Because they say the last four minutes of the first quarter, you're figuring out what they're doing that you're not doing right and what you're not doing right that you need to do. And so by the time the first four, or the last four of the first quarter and the first four of the second quarter you're figuring out what you're going to do at halftime to fix it praise God and that coach is just walking up and down the field the whole fans is screaming his name telling him it's no good he ain't worth nothing get another quarterback come on they, they're stopping our run the best coaches are in the stands he ain't letting nobody deter him because he's focused on what they're doing wrong and what he's got to do right and what he ain't doing right come on somebody so guess what at second quarter at best some of us is at halftime it's just halftime in your life when I realized that all that stuff I've been preaching to you about I went through was just in the first two quarters praise God I still got halftime in third and fourth quarter. Amen. So you know what happens at halftime? Praise God. We're marching into the, into the gym, into the locker room. Them coaches are going with a focus because they're ready to straighten it out. And they get on the whiteboard. And they say, we're going to move you here because they're whooping the daylights out of him. We're going to move him over here because they're not doing anything on this side. And so they maneuver everybody around. And then they come out. And when they come out in that third quarter, buddy, they ready to take that game. Come on, somebody. But here's where it gets really bad. Because I, I, I was, hey amen. We went to go into the, to the gym at halftime in our house. And if you've ever been around football teams, they'll be going, this is our house. Nobody coming in our house going to whoop us. And all of a sudden, them boys are down. They weary. They were walking. And them cops they, and the rest, they'll stop that one team and wait and let the, home, the guest team go first. And when that guest team's walking by, they mocking. We whooping you in your own house. Some of them boys done smarted off. Oh, they shouldn't have done that. The love for the game didn't motivate them. But them making fun of them motivated them. When we got in that locker room, you would have thought Tasmanian devils had broke loose. Stuff was flying. That coach, that coach got up and invented cuss words. Praise God. He said, not in my house. I'm telling you, he cussed. Cuss, cussed. Hallelujah. I know I'm not a I'm not a privilege to cussing. Y'all know that. But I'm telling you, he done gotten there. They done made them boys mad. Honey, they went out there and they knew about ripped their heads off in the third and fourth quarter, come back and beat them by two touchdowns. That means they had to score five touchdowns to even beat them that way. You shouldn't have messed with them. Come on. You say, and your carnal pastor could know what I'm trying to tell you is this. You don't need to give up. Amen. In the second quarter of your life. You don't need to give up in the halftime of your life. You don't even give up in the last of the third quarter. You still got a fourth quarter. Woo! When we left your daddy today, Austin was crying. He said, dear God, that'll make you want to live right. Hallelujah. Laying there on your deathbed with tears streaming down your face. Singing about the old rugged cross uh, where the timbers crossed. Uh, praise God. Uh, that's how I want to go in the fourth quarter of my life with five seconds left. I want to die dancing. Uh, I want to die sweet. I want to die love. Uh, I want to die sweet, old man. I don't want to be a mean preacher. I don't want to be a soul with my head cut off on a wall. I want to die dancing. Is there anybody in this house lift your head and say, I'm going to die dancing? I want you to understand this and I'm done. Come on, lift your hands right now and say these words with me. As for me and my house, we will. 
we will go to church. As for me and my house, we will go to Sunday morning services. No. As for me and my house, we'll go to Wednesday night church. No. As for me and my house, we'll be faithful and we'll just pay our tithes. No. As for me and my house, we will. We will. That means lift your hands and say, where does my family fit in in these last days? Where does me and my family fit in in these last days? Where do we fit in your plan, in your purpose? We're not just going to go to church. We're going to dream. We're not just going to go to church. We're going to dream. We're going to, the man of God's going to have the vision. Are you with me? The dream. The old men shall dream dreams and the young men shall see visions. Is that right? I get them mixed up sometimes. He's going to dream. And y'all are going to vision how to bring to pass the dream. Every department in this church exists to have vision of how to bring the dream to pass. Where does my family fit in these last days? We're going to serve Him. Say it with me. We're going to serve Him. Our hands are going to be in the harvest. Our feet's going to be in the harvest. Our mouths going to be in the harvest. Come on, somebody. A man of God said to me today, going into Longhorns, he said, Greg, I come to grips with myself. He said, if your dream you can accomplish in your lifetime, it ain't from God. Praise God. He said, because God gives you the dream for the next generation. Praise God. You want them building on your rooftop. Hallelujah. That means if the Lord carries, amen, you're going to be in the fourth quarter with five seconds to go yourself. You can't get bitter. God help me. You can't get offended. If you get offended and bitter, Amen. You'll settle. You'll be distracted. And the worst thing of all, you'll waste your life. But I'm not going to waste my word as me and my family fit. In these last days, we will serve. Come on, lift your hands all over the We will serve. We will serve. Joseph births Manasseh. But I want you to know this. Listen to what I'm going to say here. I'm done. This is it. The sir part was the end. Watch this. Manasseh's conceived. Nine months later, they give birth. Forgiveness and forgetting is not something that happens overnight. You have to carry that thing. And when you come on, it'll be pains and birth pains. But you've got to give birth to forgiveness and forget and then guess what happens Ephraim will be born double portion double prosperity and you will be a person who's given like you've never been hurt serving like you've never been hurt I'm done watch this you ready I wish I could have got all this because this stuff me and you love I'm going to have to share it with you after church because I won't get to it but Joseph is in there and he unveils himself to his brothers and he loves on them it's 15 years since he's seen daddy. He said, I'm glad to see Benjamin. I'm glad to see Reuben. But I want to see daddy. Pharaoh hears about it. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh hears about it. He said, he said, he said Joseph, come here. He said, I'm telling you what you're fixing to do. He said, get everything we got. Get the wagons ready. Get everything we got. You take it all. I want you to use everything you have to use. But you go down there and you get your daddy. You tell them that when he and them wagons pull up that he don't even need to get his clothes. We got clothes. You tell him he don't even need his furniture. We got the furniture. You tell him he don't need nothing. You just go bring your daddy back to you, boy. Praise God. Are you ready? You go get You load down everything and you go get daddy. Boy, this gets so good because you get to talking about the end time harvest and all this. Come on, somebody, Joe's at the top of the car. You're with me. Go get 
go get the lost. Go get them. Go get daddy. We've been estranged from each other for 15 years. He meant turn on the screens. Use everything we got. Somebody say, you ain't got to use all that. He's worthy of everything we can use. He's worthy of podcasts. He's worthy of every studio you're building up on top of that. Don't you let the devil ever tell you it's too much. Amen. God says you do everything you can. Amen. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of the new sanctuary that we have that y'all built since I've been here. Adding on, he's worthy of the screens. He's worthy of the education. He's worthy of the of the technology. Amen. You know what God I'm gonna give you? You take everything you can. You go get daddy. Come on, somebody. Does anybody hear me? And the Bible says when they left. Are you listening to this? Watch this. When they left. Joseph said, go get him, and don't you, King James, fall out of the way. Who's coming to play for me? I'm done. Don't you fall out of the way. You ready for the next translation that translates the original words? Don't you start quarreling. Don't you start fighting. Don't you get offended. You go get daddy and you don't let nothing sidetrack you. You go get daddy. In other words, don't you forget the mission. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't you forget. We're more blessed than we've ever been, but we can't forget why we're here. We're driving better cars than we've ever drove, but we can't forget why we're here. We got better preaching than we've ever had, but we can't forget why we're here. We can't forget the mission. Come on, lift your hand all over there. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the mission. How many lift your hands all over this house? Say, God, my response to you. Is I'm going to do everything within my power to fix things in my heart, my life. I don't want to forget the mission. We walked that new building over there today. The vision and the dream of God coming to pass. Praise God. To take all that, God's worthy of it all. I said he's worthy of it all. Every soul out there is worthy of it all. Every soul. Going from nine to ten prayer cloths to three thousand prayer cloths. Amen. And Micah said we don't know what went viral, but it went viral somewhere between there and there. Praise be to God. We can't forget the mission. Because guess what? Whether you're running 55 or 12, we can't forget. Don't, don't you judge it by that. You just judge it. Am I on the mission? 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 Come on, lift your hands all over this house and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've re- my hands ain't reached as far as they used to reach. I don't have the passion I used to have, but that's you and God's talking to you tonight. And you want to dream again and you want your family to serve. In this last days, where do I fit in your dream, God? We are living in the dream. This is that. That's you. I want you to start coming all over this house and say, I refuse to be a Korah. I refuse to be a Korah. I refuse to be a Korah. I'm going to be a Joseph. I'm going to have a Manessa. I'm going to have an Ephraim. Let's start coming all over this house. Me and my house, we're going to serve. Man of God, show us where to put us. Put us where you need us most. We're going to serve. Oh, I hope I've helped you. I hope I helped you. That's what breaks me the most, Pastor, when I come. Because you do so much to make me feel special. Pastors do. And I say, Lord, I want to make sure that they're glad that I came after they invited me and go through all that trouble. Hallelujah. I want to be a blessing to y'all. I want to preach to you and I pray that my, my, my preaching helped you in some way, somehow. Hallelujah. I don't want to be bitter. The Holy Ghost feels better than bitterness does. The Holy Ghost feels better than bitterness does. Praise God, the Holy Ghost feels better than bitterness does. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I praise your holy name, Lord. 
I praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve. Oh, Lord, whatever you do We're going to serve. We're going to serve. We're not just going to go to church. We're going to serve. to serve at. <laughs> Amen. That's what the enemy wanted. He wanted to get me at a place I didn't serve. He don't care if I come as long as I don't serve. He don't care if I'm here as long as I don't serve. As long as I'm not giving like I've never been in this season. Serving like I've never been hurt. Loving like I've never been hurt. Oh, remove the defense mechanisms in my mind and my heart. I want you to heal me with people. Oh, don't do it without me, Lord. I want to give birth to a Manessa. I want to give birth to a Manessa. Save it. So I can give birth to an Ephraim in my life. (laughs) Please don't do it without me, Lord. Oh, I want to dream. I want to dream. Free. (laughs) If you say. Don't fall by the way. Don't you forget the mission. Don't you forget the mission. Don't you forget the mission. Whatever we do, don't forget the mission. Don't fall out of the way. Hallelujah. Don't get fought up in quarrels. Don't get caught up in disappointments. Don't get caught up and let down. Heal me, oh God, like the seven days in one. Seven sunlight at noon days is one. care how much pride you got to swallow. Swallow the pride. The Holy Ghost feels better than offense does. Bitterness does. Amen. He, he, he says if they intentionally hurt you, pray for them. Even if they intentionally portray you, praise God. Forgive and let go and go on because you got to in your life. Because you don't want to live in misery. without me. And Lord, 
whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're saving in this season, oh, don't do it without. Help me to love You're like I've never been. <laughs>
sing it one more time. Would everybody sing it? said king will not be careful telling you where we stand we don't know what god's going to do we don't we don't know he's he's god his ways are not always our ways we don't know what he's going to do but we know you're not going to get us and we're not going to bow hallelujah hallelujah somebody would you lift your hands and just praise him out loud devil i'm still here storm i'm still here i love him i love him and i'm not going to bow now I'm not going to dismiss this. You're free to go. Just hug some necks, shake some hands. You're free to go. Try to find Brother Greg and these precious folk. Tell them how much you love them. Appreciate them. But thank you for coming all the way from Kentucky. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, thank you, son. Thank you. JJ, thank you. Thank you. Paul, Jason, thank you. Paul, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Jason, thank you for all you do. Miriam, taking off work. Thank you. Thank you. Boyd, thank you. Josh, thank you. You're free to go. God bless you. God bless you.